Tell me, tell me this then. Oh, David Blunkett will do, won't it? Uh, t tell me, do you think, I mean, a very serious issue this, I mean, do you think that uh, Mr Corbyn could and, and should be embarrassed by these 50 or so Labour MPs? Well, I think we should take Jeremy at his word, and his word is that this is new politics, that he's much more relaxed than leaders have been in the past. He, he will know, of course, that there will be dissenters on the Conservative benches. So there's going to be a difference of opinion in both major parties uh, when the, the vote comes on, should it come on Syria, uh, and w what the terms are of what David Cameron intends to, to promote. You see, last time when we voted, there was no game plan. There was no answer to the question, and what next? In other words, where are we going from here? And I think that's what David Cameron will have to answer. And it is down to the government, of course. I mean, the opposition have a, a clear responsibility to act responsibly, but the government have an absolute imperative to lead. Mm. But, I mean, you're, as we would expect, uh, incredibly well informed on the, the issues here. Do you think there, there are grounds that could be put forward by the government that Labour should support for British action in Syria against IS? Yes, I think there's a, a, now an overwhelming case that if we are assisting in Iraq to deal with ISIS and their main base is in Syria and the Russians are taking action in relation to the uh, Assad regime, then why we shouldn't join the Americans is a mystery to me because we should be saying we're dealing with a common enemy. We're dealing with them on both sides of the border. OK, um, the Iraqi government invited us to help from Iraqi soil, but this is not a war with a clear border. This is, this is a war which is about saving people from the genocide and the horrors of what ISIL uh, is actually promoting. So we, we've got, a, we've got a, 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 I would have thought, a, a clear understanding of what we need to do. The terms of engagement are a different matter. I think those need to be debated and spelt out much more clearly in what circumstances we use our, uh, the RAF and, and how we deal with the, the backup services that go with it. But from Labour's point of view, I mean, you'll understand, and you know better than, than many, that, of course, this generation of the Labour Party is scarred by the actions of, of your generation, in particular voting to join George W. Bush in actions against Iraq in 2003. Labour never wants to go through that again. Well, I think we were scarred originally by not taking action in Rwanda in 1994. We then eventually took action uh, in Southeast Europe in terms of what was happening in Bosnia and against Serbia. Uh, we, we, we claim and we keep pronouncing we're scarred by what happened in 2003. Obviously, with what we know 12 years on and the circumstances now, we might have voted differently. I would vote exactly the same again, given the knowledge I had at that time, with the arguments at that time, with the belligerence of Saddam Hussein at that time. However, let's be clear, many of the new MPs who thankfully did get elected on May the 7th, and in my own experience campaigning around the country for the, in the election, people were not raising Iraq. This is an internal Labour Party argument. And whilst a lot of the new members who have joined and those who joined to vote were interested and, if you like, were committed against uh, taking any kind of military action outside this country in the future, uh, many other people across the country are not. And I think we just need to distinguish, and I think it's a challenge for not just Labour MPs but for Labour Party members now. Uh, are we actually saying that we would never take action outside this country again unless our country itself was directly under fire? Because if we are saying that, then that's adjusted policy in a way that we haven't seen since the arguments before the First World War. And can I just ask you, Mr Blunkett, about your, your overall view of how Mr Corbyn's doing? I mean, it occurs to me that isn't, isn't there a, a part of you of a man who used to run the, the, uh, the Socialist Republic of South Yorkshire? I know you didn't term it that, but isn't there, a, isn't there a part of you that quite likes the cut of his jib, that likes some of the things he's saying and the way he's doing it? Well, if we hadn't gone through what we went through 35 years ago, there's no doubt that um, I would have had 
a great deal more sympathy. In other words, if we hadn't already run this course and been down it and seen the consequences, then quite legitimately people could say, well, let's, let's have a go. Actually, I think times have moved on. We're dealing with modernity. We're dealing with the challenge of ever rapid more globalization. We're dealing with issues around where power lies across the world and how we use uh, statescraft to actually deal with that, to mobilize the forces of consumers in boycotting the uh, transnational companies that don't pay taxes here. That's the kind of agenda I think that Jeremy uh, should be pursuing rather than the old fashioned let's nationalize, let's centralize, let's pretend we can do things from the benches in Westminster, whether they uh, the, the, in the Commons or in the Lords uh, and frankly that would be a new sort of politics I hope Jeremy because we've still got to find out four weeks on precisely what the cut of his jib actually is to be honest with you um, I'd, I'd hope that Jeremy will develop that new politics but I also hope that it will be the open politics that he's preached because we don't want organizations setting up like momentum that's been established this week being a party within a party and I think that's the challenge for Jeremy Corbyn if you mean it Jeremy then practice it and do you think do you think it's an issue if he goes to see the Queen or not to join the the Privy Council or is it a bit of a storm in a teacup well I think I think people have made, made this point before it's sometimes the way you do things and not necessarily what you do I don't think there was a real problem at all in me not uh, uh, going to take the oath at this moment in time it might have been phased and phrased more uh, carefully. Uh, I remember in 2005 when we won the election, I was back in cabinet, I had to go to take the, the oath to take the new uh, Secretary of State's job at Work and Pensions, and, and I couldn't go the first weekend, so I went a couple of weeks later. I don't think anybody made a fuss about that then, and I honestly think that we need to get on with debating the big issues around which policies the Labour Party is adhering to, what our offer will be in four years' time, uh, what kind of Britain we want to see, and above all, are we in the, the real world of modernity, or are we still anchoring after a, 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 a nostalgia of the past, which, sadly for, for some of us, has long gone.